The Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. has just disclosed that the FBI is going about building a potentially massive database of weapons, as well as other content gleaned from pictures found by crawling the internet. What the heck does this mean? Where might it be going? Guys, let's get into it. So the Department of Justice has disclosed that the FBI is about to be initiating what it is calling Project TYR. That's T-Y-R for those of you driving your lawnmowers. That's named after the Norse god. This is an initiative which, according to the Bureau, will utilize artificial intelligence, AI technology, to, quote, extract information and insights from lawfully acquired images and videos, end quote. The FBI asserts that Project Tear's purpose is to review and identify items containing nudity, weapons, explosives, and other identifying information. Stated plainly, the FBI is making ready to turn loose a technology that will crawl the vastness of cyberspace, hunting for images and videos of people doing things or in possession of items perhaps deemed objectionable by the Department of Justice and the current administration. In addition to being a good start on the spelling of tyranny, T-Y-R, Tyr is, as I already mentioned, the Norse god of war and strife. Coincidence? The technology by which Project Tier is rendered possible is thanks to Amazon's Recognition Program, which is a cloud-based computer vision platform launched in 2016, and it's capable of, apparently, determining the gender, approximate age, and even the emotional states of persons depicted in photographs and videos. Additional algorithms innate to the platform alternately detect, extract, and classify text within a still or video image, and can discern vague commodity termed unsafe visual content by the proponents and the backers of the recognition product. That's code for it can look at pictures, it can look at videos, and it's gonna figure out what's going on and be programmed to look for certain things, maybe like serial numbers. In addition to shocking the broader digital community, because don't forget, there's not only Second Amendment implications here, there's general privacy concerns, there's technology concerns, you name it. One of the concerns is whether or not this actually runs up against or abuts the moratorium that Amazon, as well as Jeff Bezos, formally implemented against the police use of the software recognition. The NRA suggests that Project Tier may have been undertaken in response to a surprisingly high number of convicted felons who apparently enjoy to <laughs> pose with firearms on social media contrary to the weapons law. I can tell you, as a criminal defense attorney, that checks out. Now, we all know that there has been tremendous strides and progress that has been made as far as taking a picture of an individual and then being able to identify the individual. Whether that's for better or worse, you be the judge. It's probably sometimes a little bit of each depending upon what's going on. However, as recently as 2018, you used to see, and we're looking at big companies like Microsoft, IBM, and others, we used to see a 30% plus error rate observed by an MIT study. This got even particularly bad when we're talking about non-white, darker-skinned subjects in question. Now, this led to an immediate condemnation by none other than the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, who back in 2018 said, look, we should not be using this software as part of law enforcement. And then just to drive another nail in that coffin at the time, there was another study that was disclosed that said that the Amazon recognition software, that's the same software we're talking about now by the FBI, albeit sometime later, mismatched 28 members of Congress with random mugshot photos. Now this revelation compelled 25 members to jointly pen a letter to Jeff Bezos, the founder and owner of Amazon, in which the members of Congress expressed their concerns about recognition and its suitability for basically law enforcement applications. That probably is what then spurred the no more law enforcement applications moratorium. Now Amazon has vigorously defended recognition and the accuracy of its determinations, which albeit may not be perfect, I'm sure they're claiming has drastically improved since 2018. Notably, however, the 
tech juggernaut has not submitted the technology's key algorithms to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is a chronically underfunded agency of the U.S. Department of Commerce charged by the Biden administration in 2023 with the creation of an AI Safety Institute. We appreciate you checking out the video. If you've not already done so, tell us you like it. Tell the algorithm it's worthwhile. Hit that like button, all the good YouTube things. Join the discussion in the comment field below. And if you just caught us browsing through, we do all sorts of related content to the Second Amendment. You name it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos. And back to the content. Now, for those of you wondering, of course, the Fourth Amendment protects individuals from unreasonable searches and seizures. In the landmark 1967 case, Katz, with a K, versus United States, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the Fourth Amendment protects legitimate or reasonable expectations of privacy where a person has exhibited an actual, albeit perhaps subjective, expectation of privacy and that the expectation is one that society is prepared to recognize as being reasonable. So the relevant issue within the context of facial recognition are whether people have an actual expectation of privacy if they're in a public place and whether contemporary American society recognizes such an expectation as being reasonable. So in other words, you have a reasonable expectation of not being hit by AI detecting cameras and videos and all that other kind of stuff to match up you and figure out who you are if you walk down the street or maybe when you walk into the store, or if you post something online in this case. So while the Katz case does underscore and establish some of the framework for what may constitute reasonable expectations of privacy, and believe me, there's gonna be conversations about this as we talk about online and inevitably when there's legal challenges to this. If you believe the Gun Owners of America, GOA, they have a page on their website which basically chronicles and to a very real degree alleges that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the ATF, could be maintaining a searchable centralized registry of firearms and firearm owners. Whether that is true or not, it brings us to the following point. There were about 18.5 million firearm sales conducted in 2021. Again, that's one went through background check. Private sales, something else. Of those 18.5 million, about 7.2% or approximately 1.3 million were transacted through the website gunbroker.com alone. So just think about it. We've got gunbroker.com, armslist.com, guns.com, gunbuyer.com, shoot smart. Who knows what other companies will be coming tomorrow? And of course, there's any number that have already closed yesterday. All these places are putting loads of content online, including pictures, but also written text that can oftentimes, very oftentimes, include serial numbers. Will Amazon's recognition software or whatever other software might be coming along next, could this be used to build a database? Much like we've seen already, Google was able to basically build a database that we've covered here on this channel before, where using their own technology that were crawl pictures, it was discovered that if you go ahead, and we're not the ones that made the discovery, another source did, that if you oftentimes just Googled serial numbers for firearms that there were pictures of online, you could actually find those pictures of those firearms. If AI and Google can make these connections, what might the government or other actors, whether state or non-state actors, be doing with this information? Are we ever really gonna know? One thing's for sure, and it's something that we all know to the point where we take it as an axiom. We just take it as an implicit understanding that we all have, both me and you down the lens. You cannot really do effective confiscation without registration. Registration is the precursor to everything. Is this the first step towards a technology-driven registration? Could the end not come alone through government? but through some sort of blended stakeholder capitalism, to use a buzz term from these days. Where could this all be going? What's the end game? You be the judge. Let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to joining this discussion. I suspect it could get a little spicy. Before I leave you today, let's get to our quote of the day. This one comes from noted philosopher and thinker Bertrand Russell. Quote, the whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves, but wiser people are so full of doubts. Very true. We appreciate you sticking around this long. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've not already done so, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content, and we'll see you in the next one.